The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. I could have never seen what was coming for me. Hangs at the skate park, hangs by the beach. My life, it feels like. Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your cleanest brother, Travis McElroy. All right. I'm your sweet, all right. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. That feels wrong to me, Travis. Sorry, I'm, I meant it in the way of like dirty mouth, clean it up. Like you lent liquor, kind of clean. Yeah. Well, I, have the, I have the cleanest mouth of all three brothers. Uh, what a wild... What a wild thing to how say. How can you, uh, how on earth, how on earth could you know that? Well, I've heard you say fewer cuss words, but more challenging ideas than the two Oh, no, us. okay, so I can't speak, I can't speak to the challenging ideas. Listen, I can't speak to the challenge, but James O'Neill. more uncomfortable yeah. than Justin has. I can't say Thank about you. my own sort I love of discomfort. That. Okay. Uh, James O'Neill emailed us, because on a recent episode, we talked about, uh, like, number swears. Jimmy! <laughs> It's and me. That's what I call it. Jimmy I... got to get a job, Jay. Well, <laughs> Jimmy O, Jimmy O. Got to get a hobby. I guess you have a hobby. Got to get Jimmy a o hobby. Analyzed transcripts from uh nearly 200 episodes between 2010 and 2021 uh because of pandemic. Right. Boredom. Boredom did a lot of things to a lot of people in the pandemic and for Jimmy O, it was going through and looking at our wordy dirts. Um so what was the time frame? Of the of this from 2010 to 2011, 200 episodes. Okay, I used to cuss a lot more than I do now. Then now that I have kids, like I don't want them to know that I know the cuss words because then they'll ask me what they are. Now it's important to note. It's important to note that Jimmy O used words banned by Google as the metric. So like words like porn, right? But that this was is... according to Google. That's a no no. Can't say porn. <laughs> you can't say porn. You can't say that it's real. Can't say you can't it's even real. say the point. It's not even about watching it. It's like you can't even say it's real, I, Google. Hey, I listen, guys. I want to get out in front of this and say, um, I'm. I know Google can find porn. I'm certain of it. I've, Wait, I what? Say that. I can say with. I know Jeeves can. I ask him all the time, yeah, sure. and he's like, "Yes, again, Master Travis." Oh. Yeah, but he doesn't. Well, but Travis doesn't ask little... him to find porn. He asks if he is able to, and Jeeves <laughs> is like, "Yeah, do you want me to?" Put so a you could on that boss. It's usually the question is like, "So if I asked you to." You could find porn. And he's like, yes. Like, yes like, For the wow. 70th like, time today, Master Travis. Stuff, I send geez. that little puppy from dog pile into the dog pile every day looking <laughs> for it. He always comes back with a boner, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the, 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 the spiders from web crawler are all over the place getting yeah. <laughs> eat the pornography I crave. <laughs> Tra- Anyways. Travis, Travis run out of search engines. <laughs> he knows Bing, about. Bing, more like bung. I get uh, my cookies the, the old fashioned way. Okay. Self-stimulation. <laughs> da, da, oh. da, da, da. Okay. So who's got the dirtiest mouth? Of okay, us? I'll get. So in that right in in the two hundred things, I cursed a total of eight hundred and eighty nine times. That sounds like so much. <laughs> Based off of that number, where do you think Justin's at? Spoiler: Griffin had the most. Yeah. So I'm at eight hundred and eighty nine. Where do you think Justin's at? I don't know why Justin's getting so close up close and comfortable. Uh, He's trying to smell his doing? curse words from 200 episodes. It's not for the podcast, stupid. Is stupid one of Google's fan words? It's not for podcasts. Is stupid a Google ban word, Travis? Because it makes me feel bad. <laughs> I mean, my daughter would tell you that stupid is a dirty word. Yeah. Stupid porn. Just keep doing your dumbass <laughs> shit. 
Okay, Justin. No, Justin, why on earth would we do that and not just wait for you to be finished fixing your shit? Because you're in- incapable of not commenting on it. Yeah, it's no, pretty. Keep going in, keep leaning in. You, you, yeah, you're weirdo. Hey, you know how on the Bear <laughs> season two, it, there's that episode. There's that n- episode of the Bear where like one of the guys from the Bear it just starts adjusting the camera, and the other actors are like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Don't bring just it keep up. Going. Just, just keep, keep going. Just keep going. It's the we're making the you Bear. You see him pull his mic back out and like <laughs> yeah. fiddle with the knob <laughs> on it. Out of batteries. Just keep going. Let's Carmi. keep going. I fucked oh. up the focus. <laughs> keep doing your show." Fix your but focus. The question's the about you, Justin. In 200 episodes, I swore 889 times. How many times do you think you swore? It's not It's not a focus. It's not a focus. Jesus. Yeah. Can I guess Justin's yeah. number? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to say I'm gonna say he did there. 50% more than you. I'm going to say Justin did 1,235. Justin did 1,023. Okay. Griffin comes in. Is it a lot more? At a whopping 2,034. No. Are you telling me he curses twice as More much than both as of me? you combined? Correct. That's bad. That can't and be right. James took it a little further. If we paid a quarter per, per swear, we would collectively owe $3,946 from just 200 episodes. Yeah, uh-huh. we've cussed certainly more since then. Almost $4,000 in quarters, which would weigh about 200 pounds. Okay. Okay. Okay, now, here's the question. What yeah. is our go-to swear? Fuck. Fuck. Oh, see, that's what I would have guessed too. That's number two. Behind porn? No, behind shit. We say shit it 1,570 times. Okay. Fuck, In only 924. Episodes, we've gotten better at it, is what I'm saying. Like, we can say cooler words now because that is true. Like, we're older and that's we, true. We, that's and, true. It's like, a much more advanced, tasteful kind of cursing. Back we, in the back in the day, you could say shit in like a PG movie, and so like we were all saying that all the time. But now we are older and we can do cooler cuss words. These are three stats that I love. One, well, these are the two. But uh, e- each one of these we said once. We said tits once. We said Ew. erection. We said <laughs> erection. It. Erection once. Saying but, tits once is the worst version of it. Like, that's so you. bad. Yeah. Saying it one time is really bad. As a, I'm going to Google erection. There's no way that's a bad Hey, Griffin, word. don't do that. Don't do that, Griffin. Hey, no, I mean, don't it's a Google bunch of, like, it. No, it's like a bunch of like doctor websites talking about how like how to get cooler, better. <laughs> how to but get, Google didn't. Yeah. But there wasn't. But Google's face didn't appear in the screen and just be like. Gross. But this is my favorite stat. What's your favorite over that, stat? Over that 200 episode, we said penis 69 times. <laughs> that's great. Are you kidding me? Well, that's really? actually part of the ARG. A lot of people didn't know that we mm. were doing that back then, but we thought this would be a really great joke for 13 years later. Yeah. Um, what a meta good joke. Oh, no, Travis, by saying it, you <gasps> added to the tally. No, I Dang guarantee, it. I guarantee, boys, that uh, in uh, more than... Uh, in 600 some episodes, we've said penis more than 69 Probably times. More times. Thank you um, for that good work, James. Thanks, James. Hey, we'll I better. wanted to ask you guys, did you, uh, can we take a moment to honor, uh, our hero after his special day, his special triumphant day, Joey Indiana Chestnut? Jones? Oh. Joey Chestnut, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, sorry if you had T voted it and wanted to show it later. Mm. Uh, Joey Chestnut won his 16th hot dogging contest. After a two-hour weather delay, hey, too man. rainy for dogs. Hey, listen, man, but that motherfucker got real hungry. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sure of it. Imagine that he's like, you're hollowed out. You're like, man, in just a minute, I'm going to be eating hot dogs unless, then, <laughs> unless, unless hot dog contest at nine, turbo dump scheduled for eight <laughs> fifty-five. He does that. And then he has two hours where his body is metabolizing the the, the hot dog residue from the previous <laughs> night's earnings. This is, this is, it's a, a lot of people have forget. Joe, Joey Chestnut is uh, mainly a chlorophyll life form. Yeah. yeah, this is the one time he feeds per year. <laughs> he right, comes out of his hybrid. But I wanted to ask you guys: Did you guys see the intro for Joey Chestnut this year? No, did he have his he... own like WWE style like entry? Hey guys, you're gonna think I'm making this up or that any of this is a joke, but we're gonna enjoy it right now. 
15,000 generations of humanity, yet we have evolved not at all. Bound like animals to the laws of physics, shamed before the universe. And in all of history, only one man has stood to say that he will dictate what is and is not possible <laughs> in this world. I speak of this man. For he has broken reality, and all of time pours down around us now at once, simultaneous and endless, erasing cause and effect, and opening all possibilities before us. And the ancient powers are subordinated to their own creation, and they smile at his achievement, and they say he shall live forever. For he does not do it for money, he does not do it for glory, he does it for his people, he does it for his country, he does it for freedom! And the gods shine down on us now, and the gods shine down on us still, because of him alone, because of him alone! <laughs> the Nathan's famous 4th of July champion of the world. I want to say I here. I mean, can you even imagine? Oh, my God. I want to say here, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, I can say empirically, unequivocally, Joey Chestnut, will perish one day. <laughs> Joey, Chest Joey Chestnut one More day. More than you could even say about other mortal people. More than, I, yeah. I, I, there's a chance, medical science is coming along so fast, somebody might discover, you know, the, the fucking umbrella virus thing that just lets humans live forever, but it won't work. If that medicine was invented today... It wouldn't work on Joey Chestnut because of the what he's done to his body. Or um, I mean, there is a chance, right, that it's gonna come round the other side, and oh, it's I like, see. oh, he consumes so many nitrates. The nitrates are saying. preserving him from within. And God yes. will look down and say, "Guys, I gave him to you. I gave you yeah. everything you needed. Uh -huh. I, this man can eat all, enough hot dogs to live forever. Why can't you all?" Can I tell you what it's giving me, Justin? What? It's giving me Paul Bettany in a Knight's Tale. Is yes. giving me Paul Bettany as the hair. I believe it's Chaucer, if I remember yeah, correctly. It, it was in Knight's Tale, and it's making me think that maybe it was time for Joey to go out, and he was like, "Oh no, the two-hour delay is throwing everything off. I have to take a second dump now. I'm not. I, I'm going to be late. I won't make it." And the, his herald was like, "I can buy you dump time. I yeah. will buy you dump time, sir." Uh, 62 is, I will say, below his total, the projected yeah. total that he was kind of. He got iced out, though. I guess. But the experts were calling for seventy-one to seventy-two. But you iced him. What's his He's, record? What? What's his what record? His, I, you know what? I don't know Joey Chestnut's record. Look, is, Travis. Joey Chestnut. I bet the number's not going to be very funny or interesting. Record. I bet it'll be around seventy. Um, he set a competition record: seventy-six dogs in two thousand twenty-one. That's a lot Miki of dogs. Sudo, for sure. Who won the women's contest eight times? Won for the ninth time. 39 and a half hot dogs. Excellent. I mean, that's so many hot dogs. That's, that's a, a lot. Hot dog. uh, people I didn't know forget because we were Joey kind of messes. I know what they're saying about the reality. Yeah. Joey kind of messes with you a little bit. Like 70 Check hot this dogs. Out. That's a Check this out. I don't think I could pick up 76 hot dogs. <laughs> I think if 76 hot dogs were handed to me on the plate, I'd be like, whoa. I would drop them, let alone put them in me and keep them in me. How much would 76 hot dogs weigh? 76 pounds. Duh. Um, wow. Okay, here's a quote from Joey Chestnut. That okay, then we'll up, we gotta move on. Okay, but it opens up a realm of possibility to me. When talked about because of the storm, he said, what a roller coaster emotionally. I wasn't even sure if we I were going to hungry, eat today. I felt hungry, and then I yeah. felt very hungry, and then I felt <laughs> never hungry again. I was all over the place. <laughs> I wasn't even sure if we were going to eat today. I'm just happy. <laughs> I'm just happy, he added, it's 4th of July, and I got to eat some hot dogs. <laughs> Is that it? A lot of people, I'm, I'm making a lot of assumptions about Joey Chestnut's whole regimen. I imagine there's a lot of just sort of like 
pushing sawdust down in there just to expand the capacity of his hot dog inventory that he keeps inside of him. They make it sound like they don't let my man eat hot dogs at any other time of the year. Yeah. And so when he when they take off the the fucking muzzle, yeah. uh and they let him smell that good hot dog, he goes fucking ballistic. I I mean Griffin, let me ask you this. If there was a day <laughs> If there was a day of the year where you had to eat several dozen hot dogs, yeah. do you think you would seek them out uh, otherwise? Yeah, how long, how long in a calendar year before you're like, oh, you know what I could go for? July 3rd, <laughs> that motherfucker has to be like, God damn, I would kill for a hot dog right now. But there's no way like October 10th, he's like, you know what? Oh, hit the spot. He <laughs> has to practice eating the hot dogs, right? Like you don't at this point? It. It's like eating a bike. You just do it. <laughs> oh. um, I think he's got. I think he's. Do you think he even tastes it? Do you think we? Do you think he has ever? <laughs> when was the last time Joey Chestnut took a bite out of a hot dog and was like, mm, "That's a good hot dog"? Does he I don't savor think, it? Is is that the question? I don't think so. I don't think so anymore. When hey, I bet around about October he starts like take a bite, swish it around, spit it out like a wine tasting. Just get. Get the power going, get the hunger for it. Because otherwise, he'll take that first bite July 4th and be like, (laughs) so salty. Do you guys think we could book Joey Chestnut? I don't think I would want to book Joey Chestnut. You are you're wild. He seems like a real champion. I mean, he yeah. is a champion. I love when champion. he choke slammed that protester on the stage. <laughs> oh, God. Um, that was obviously not like his like main thing he's known for. He's known for mostly how good he is at eating hot dogs. But then there was that one time there was a protester on stage and he choke slammed him. And he, his style wasn't as good as his hot dog eating style was. I will grant you that, Justin. Yeah, that's true. I saw a stat that he has fifty five different. Like championships, in 50, oh, 55. <laughs> Joey Chestnut holds fifty-five world records across fifty-five disciplines. What? Okay, it's okay. one it of them. He's just a, that's, that's how many he's counting. I might have a Fazoli's breadstick one. I don't know. I'd have to check. Certainly, most t- most irritated server when I'm like, yeah. um, maybe one more. I think maybe one more. Um, uh, well, this is an advice show. I don't know why we wasted all that time on non-advice because this is this is the show right now. Show starts now. That was the cold open. Here's the show. I found that I genuinely love fishing. I love the quiet waiting moments and then the battle of wits. And while I and I will engage my quarry, I do not know how to do anything except catch the fish, tie knots in my line, take the hook out of the fish, put a lure on. Anything other than the actual act of fishing, I do not know. I'm going to a community fishing day soon, and I want to look really cool to the groups of old men that will probably be there. How do I look like I'm really good at fishing and know what I'm doing? I'm some flustered fisher in Baton Rouge. And it sounds like you like fishing like I like fishing, which is fishing with your dad. Yeah. But he mm. does all that for you. Yeah. yeah. Because here's the thing. I got good news, and I got gooder news. Wow. Because the first half of it, good news. Tying stuff onto the line, I guarantee there is... Uh, pun intended, a boatload of YouTube videos that you yeah. will find that will help you understand that. Now, the good news, the second half, taking the fish off the line, there's no way you're going to be able to practice that beforehand, but if your fishing experience is anything like mine, it won't come up. So yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. No, Just no, make, they a, love to make catch a lot of noise. You stomp your feet a little bit. You won't ever have to worry about taking the fish off the hook. They'd love to catch the fish. They're good at catching the fish. I I I really I actually sympathize with this. I would feel so mortified if I like had to take a fit like just touching the fish. No good. That's no good for me. And I would hate what would happen is I'd be paralyzed by fear and rather than touch the fish, I would just watch it die there yeah, in front sure. of me. And that right. would feel terrible. Yeah. I'm not going to give that to my family. Yeah, I'm not, you know, he's not big enough. Look at him. You and I both know you're not doing anything with it, right? It's like, oh, no, why did... And in that moment, Justin... I just wanted to be a gigantic dick. (laughs) Yeah, right? I think you would be ragged with like, what did I think I was going to do? Sorry. (laughs) He's looking at you like, what was your plan? What's the next step? Exactly. That's where you have your fish butler step up and take care of it for you. Or as I call him, my dad. Yeah, Take yeah. our dad with you. He hasn't with been fishing with us in a long time. A he long probably been happy. I'll say this: he kind of stopped asking at a certain yeah. point. Um, yeah. 
teenage years or so, I think. Isn't that weird that dad did go fishing with us at some point? It feels like a different dad, right? Like It definitely feels like a, a man, a pre, pre-metamorphosis. Now, we were with French McCormick, though. French McCormick was also there, so maybe French McCormick was taught. No, dad probably knows how to do that stuff. He was a kid in the I, 50s I, like everybody had to fish. My theory about Clint McRoy is that oh. there were a lot of things that he had us do, like play sports and like go fishing and stuff that he also didn't like doing, but he no. felt like, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to make my sons do this. So I think when, as soon as we were old enough for him to not have to take us fishing anymore, he was like, oh, thank God. But it's What's good his boys, that- Mario Brothers? I'm going to start playing that with you now. It's good that he did that. It's good that he did that. Because I know now that I don't like any part of the fishing process. Yeah, Any correct. part of it. The water smells bad. It doesn't smell like pool water, which smells like amazing. Um, the It's bo- It's so boring and nothing ever happens. Mm-hmm. And then if it does happen, you've killed an animal or at the very least maimed it in some way that you cannot follow through Maybe on. emotionally maimed it, if nothing emotionally else. If nothing else, it. you've created... What I can only assume is a near-death experience for the fish. Yeah. Now, I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. If I was on Survivor, which hit me up Jeffrey, I would do so good. And they gave me that little spear with the wristband, and you let it go, and it and it gets a little, you know, you get a fucking Nemo on there, yeah. and you swim that back. To me, that's okay, because I can just sort of, like, take the spear and just sort of, like, down if into the pan. If you shake that spear... And get really the fish good. Off. You can yeah. like chuck him, chuck him. You do that there. thing where you kind of hit it against the ground, and the fish just slides all the way down the Perfect. Stick. Yeah, it's fine. Perfect. It yeah. would be good to throw the fish back though, because I love uh, once you speared through it. <laughs> once you <laughs> speared it, if I catch it with a hook, and it goes back, and they're like, "Well, Reginald, is there anything you'd like to say to Douglas?" Yes, Douglas. The nether worm does exist, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I ate the nether worm, and it happened exactly like you said with the giants and everything. And I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. believe you. It was, I gotta be honest, the wildest shit in my life. That was yeah. absolutely unhinged, Douglas. I apologize. I owe, I owe you. <laughs> I was surrounded by dry. Is that dry? anything? <laughs> is there, is there, yeah. I don't know how to say it. It's a dry ocean. <laughs> It's, it's like, like a, a dry a bubble. Dry it, water, like water you can't breathe. It was crazy. weird. Um, hey, how about a wiki how from the wizard? A wiki wizard. A wiki wizard. A wiki wizard. Here's one that was sent in by Kim. Thank you, Kim. It's uh it's a wiki how article. <laughs> it's how to be like Batman. The Dark huh. Knight, the vigilante, the Cape Crusader. If you want to move in shadows like Batman, you can learn to think, act, and look like him for fun. Just for fun? Just for fun and for business. For profit. This is my job, Dad. This is my work. I am paying money for this. Okay, by the people to be I fair, rescue. Batman's job is not being Batman. It costs him a great, it is his hobby. That is Bruce Wayne's hobby. No, his your job. Your, that is a hyper-capitalistic impulse, Travis. Hugely capitalistic and gross. Late-stage capitalism, gross. even, I would say. Really I'm saying Batman doesn't now. charge for his business, for his services. That would be wild. Servant. He's a public servant, but he doesn't get paid for it. He doesn't get a stipend from the city. Well, he's Kickstarter. He's on Kickstarter. Oh, good point. Yeah, I didn't think. Yeah, he does Kickstarter projects sometimes where he's like, "Help me Kickstart to kick the Joker's ass." Yeah. Um, He has bat. He has battery on. (laughs) (laughs) I like that this article clarifies that he moves in the shadows because it does always make me think like Batman at like two p.m. on a Friday, just like running down the street, be like, "I'm chasing the Joker." (laughs) You'd be like, what? Where are you? There's some there's some gross misunderstandings about Batman lore in this first part. Thinking like Batman. Fight for justice. Batman is a superhero, which means he fights against injustice in all its forms. He fights against evil. Batman has been known to take on gangsters, supervillains, human penguins. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No. No. Well, genetically engineered monster alligators, evil clowns, and frozen men. Frozen men, I will. Okay, that we one can, is that's a we'll semantic split hair. issue. The penguin is not a the pink the penguin from the penguin is not a human penguin. Right, He's and a, we can and all also agree on ki- that. Killer Croc, aka Waylon Jennings, was born that way. He was not genetically engineered. He had a, a mutation. Right again, th- 
we're really sort of missing the big headline here, which is that penguin, not a human penguin. You tell me what a human penguin is. You can't be a human penguin. You no, can be a human now, penguin. You can be a penguin. Oswald Copperpot is as close to a human penguin as I think a human penguin That's be. Like, okay, that doesn't make any sense, Travis. No, you're right. He's Wikipedia a penguin article, human. You're right. In the, in the penguin's Wikipedia article, when it lists his fucking kingdom phylum class, right. it's going to be the same as Batman's. Um, because he's a human with penguin-like tendencies, but not a human penguin. Pretty much the basics. If you want to be like Batman, you got to be good and fight for the side of justice. You probably don't have any two faces or penguins in your neighborhood, but that doesn't mean there's no injustice in your world. Fucking certainly. Keep a yeah. close eye out for other kids being picked on or anything unfair. Stand up for fairness and equality. I would also, I mean, I would also say you just do like Batman and basically just create your own. <laughs> Yeah, bad guys like Batman. Half of Batman's yeah. guys, yeah. he had like, to brew up a lot of his own his own people. Yeah. yeah, man. If only he'd been there for Harvey Dent. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, kind of let Harvey Dent he down Harvey in that Dent. courtroom setting. And um, okay, these two ideas might seem not the same, but step two: defend the innocent. Bruce Wayne became Batman because his parents were killed in a robbery attempt. Well, I know how to become Batman. <laughs> yeah, I hey. guess I know how to become Batman. <laughs> See, do you have any easier ways? Is there any this other? Is the second step is the first step is fight the human penguins, and the second step is if your parents were killed, you would be closer now, to being Batman than you are okay. right now. But I think if we looked at this a little bit more like uh, like the method, you know, the actor's method. Sure, it doesn't yeah. have to be that your parents were killed. Right, you can find a smaller version of that, like maybe a, a teenager called your dad a mean name and made him feel small, and you're yeah. like, okay, so let me build on that, <laughs> right? And like that now, like I can take that. And what's that feeling? Let me blow that up. You made my dad feel like a cuck. So how does that make me feel? You that man, Bruce Wayne, you. <laughs> you made my dad feel small. <laughs> you made my dad feel like a beta cuck. <laughs> <laughs> you cooked my dad. <laughs> Uh, I'm your nose. You made fun of my dad's shorts. <laughs> now he loves those shorts. He loves those shorts so much. I got my dad those shorts for Father's Day. Use gadgets more than any other superhero. <laughs> I mean, Bat yeah, there more it is. than any other superhero. Batman has the most cool gadgets. Okay, if what about you Inspector like Gadget? You piece of shit. <laughs> or Iron Man or oh. any other superhero. Stay up to date on new technology. Learn to use the computer and mobile phones very well. <laughs> Do you know how <laughs> that does make sense because there's never a scene of Batman who's like, wait, how does it work? Wait, what do I do? Control. What? Okay, wait. Hit control first. And then it, wait, I forgot my password. Hold on. Uh, do you know how good you have to be at computers before somebody's like, wait a minute. Are you Batman? Are you Batman? Because yeah. you're really, really very, very good at computers. Try to understand how the internet works and how to use new software. Get your parents' permission to do these things and stay Thank up to you. date. Now, again, we could cut out the middleman. The two middle people that yeah, made you. Batman doesn't have to ask his parents permission for anything. Ask his parents for any permission <laughs> ever for anything at all. Batman doesn't keep his grades up. No, unless he's Alfred not. is like a, a really strict or something. But Alfred gets it. He knows that he's got other priorities. Yeah, I, um, wouldn't it be why if there was like a scene in Batman where he was like talking to Vicky Vale, Bruce Wayne? He's like, it was so tough on me watching my parents die there in the streets. I mean, I did get to stay up as late as I want, and I could eat cookies like whenever. Great. But like, Just and yeah, cream, like ice cream, I, ice cream. I was ice cream, ice cream. I mean, I was a, like an eight-year-old billionaire. It in that in that way, I could have like a circus at whatever birthday party I wanted to. And my parents could say <laughs> hey, no, but I'm gonna go punch the Joker. Did you ever see Blank Check? It's like that if at the end he didn't get caught by his parents and get in trouble. And instead yeah. it was just Blank Check forever. Yeah, because uh, his, parents, his parents were unfortunately killed by, let's say in this circumstance, Tone Loke. <laughs> Tone Loke <laughs> killed that kid's parents and then he got a billion dollars. And then that's stopped, me. You know the difference between you and me? I stopped going to school in fourth grade. <laughs> I didn't want to go anymore, so I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it. My parents couldn't make me. They were good. Um, all right. They equivocate really quickly here. Batman <laughs> is rich, which helps in the gadget department, but you don't have to be. If you want some pretend gadgets, use an old broken calculator, old clocks, and other broken electronics that have been thrown out in place of gadgets. Take them apart. And use the sad man, more like Take it. Take them I right? apart <laughs> and use the components for fun. Ask permission first. But my this parents. Is, but I'm not reading. Sorry. I'm not reading an article called How to Pretend to be Batman. Yeah. Do you know? 
Oh my god! Is how Justin? to be like how to be like Batman, and Batman doesn't pretend. He really kicks Joker's ass, and he fights the human penguin for my rights. Justin, you just made me realize something in saying like my parents can't stop me. Is like he always talks about becoming Batman, like. In, like in spite of his like his parents got killed and then he had to become Batman. But if his parents had been around and you have like an eight year old's like I'm gonna go study with like assassins and cheetos and stuff. And his parents are like no, no you're fucking not going to not college. Be, you're not allowed Stop. to be Batman. Cut it out. Uh, make your own Bat Cave. Every Batman needs a space to call their own. Batman's cave is where he hides his Bat gear, changes into costume, and does his Bat research. You don't necessarily <laughs> need a secret passageway to get to your Bat Cave or a mansion to hide it under, but it's still good to have a space that's yours. Turn your room into a bat cave, keep it private, put a sign on the door that says, bat cave, no penguins or evildoers. You're really, you've really got it out for the penguin in this article, huh, article writer? Do you think you he calls really it- hate the penguin. Do you think he calls it his bat research? <laughs> like, do you <laughs> have to go to that dude? Bat research. Bat research. Oh, you're researching bats? No, I'm Batman, I'm, ba I'm a man, like Batman, so bat research. Shut up. <laughs> Um, Leave me alone. Face, You're not my real dad, Alfred. Okay. Face your fears. Batman picked a bat. Uh, it's a symbol because he's afraid of bats. He wanted a symbol to strike fear into the hearts of his enemies, just as bats struck fear into him. If you're not afraid of bats, you need to find and face your own fears like Batman did. This is wrong. If I want to be like Batman, I need to be afraid of the same shit Batman is afraid Correct. of, which is bats. Yes. I mean, if I, I don't want to split hairs, but if I was creating Batman from the beginning. Yep. And I was like, okay, what's the thing he's afraid of that he's going to become just like par like straight fear into bad guys' hearts? I'd be like, I've become parent killer murderer man, right? Because yeah. like that's you can't tell me Bruce is more afraid of bats, right? At this point, and now he's a superhero that kills bad guys' parents. <laughs> that would change, be terrifying. He should change his whole thing. Batman's whole thing is bats, scary, huh? But like, I guarantee you. When the penguin sees bats now, he is at the very most inconvenienced by them. Mm -hmm. He should update it based on what is currently most scary in the world. I'm not saying that COVID man would have been like a guy <laughs> who was around in 2020, 2021 before we whipped this thing's ass. Thanks, Dr. Fauci. Yeah. Um, but that's you got to update the brand. You got to keep it fresh. Yeah. Hey, guys, be willing to do what it takes. Sometimes Batman has to live outside the law. He's not a policeman, but he sometimes works with the police. Sometimes, though, the police want to arrest him. However, he's always fighting for the side of good. Are you willing to do what it takes, even if it'll get you some heat? Kick ass. So to if, you don't have, if, if you don't have money, if you are burdened with not enough money, too uh -huh. many parents, yep. <laughs> then you know what to do about those two things now. And you can do a pretend with a broken calculator if you want. Yeah. But are you willing to go against the eyes of the law and be getting arrested um, for the fight of good? Because um, the cops aren't good. Sometimes they're not. And you got to do what it takes. So with your broken clock and your broken calculator and your <laughs> penguin-proof you bedroom, are you willing to go against to the To do cops? what it takes. Are I, you going to do what it takes? Talk like Batman as well. Okay, sure. I would have started with that. That's easy. I would have started with that before. In Batman, I lives. am. <laughs> no, right? No, can't can't do this. <laughs> Travis, you're way over oh, yeah, budget Batman. for the. You're way over budget for this season. <laughs> weather, actually, um, so please please rein it in. Um, the rest of it's not very fun. It's like you know, get strong. Yeah. Um, uh, Mari's act tough. Act tough. Batman's uh, definitely yeah, tough and strong. Tough. That is true. When Batman gets punched by a bad guy, he never goes like, ow! Yeah. <laughs> That's you what never I see, do. You never see Batman doing weak and slow movements. When you decide to run, run like you invented it. No doubts. When you jump, jump like a boss. Jump like Batman. Jump like Batman like a boss. <laughs> Holy shit. This guy, this run sounds like, like a I invented trainer. it? <laughs> you hey, mean yeah. like, oh, I'm the first person to run so my legs are going in weird directions. You're like, sorry, <laughs> I'm still figuring it out. I just invented this. The Joker is walking away from you like, you'll never catch me, Batman. And you're like, oh, really? Check this out. <laughs> Wait, how are his legs moving so fast? <laughs> Slow down, Bat. You're driving me batty. If this article was like a Peloton class instructor, I could cry. I could really grind it out for out. When you decide to run, run like you invented it. No doubts. When you jump, jump like a boss. Jump like Batman. 
<laughs> I'm fucking getting so many splat points today. Thank you so Can much. I, I'm thinking back, and now I'm wondering, imagine this, Batman, right? And he's like one of the bigger, bulkier versions of Batman, right? He draws Frank himself. Miller Batman. Yeah, he's maybe uh, more in the Affleck movie Batman, but a bigger dude. He drops down. There's like 12 thugs, and the first thug punches him in the face, and he goes, ow, fuck, <laughs> starts crying. I guarantee yeah. those thugs are gonna be so thrown off. Yeah. They don't, they're not yeah. gonna know what to think. And that's when Batman strikes by crying even harder. So hard, like <laughs> snot starts coming out. Maybe he throws up a little bit. And, and they those realize thugs are like, oh God, I feel terrible. They realize weakness is okay. And sometimes weakness is strength. Yeah, right. And they don't and need to they, do this anymore. They start talking to Batman. Batman's like, I just can't just talk to you guys. Oh, this is, I wanted to know what you need to admit. And they're like, oh my God, I feel so terrible. That's when he stabs them. It just, I want to get one last little point in here. It's one of the things in the turn, get your body right thing is uh, eat a healthy diet. Another part of staying fit like Batman does is eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. When you want a snack, have some nuts and apple or some carrots instead of fruit snacks or candy. There's no way that Bruce Wayne doesn't eat like a total child yeah. fucking <laughs> every day. This man subsists. I think he's probably stepped it up to like where he's doing um, like green chili chicken uh, verde burritos from Trader Joe's, but like twice a day. Yeah. And then he will have like uh, an insure in the morning. Yeah. And he doesn't. Batman, Batman has not drank water. Yeah. In I bet while he sleeps, years. Alfred sneaks in and hooks him up to an IV because <laughs> all Batman to. drinks is like Baja Blast and sure, shit. Yeah, you like, forgot your Mio. You need it if you want to consume. No, give me Code Red. No, you bet, sir. You can't have any more Code Red. <laughs> oh, I don't have one to go red. I'm a I'll big boy and I can drink. I could buy and sell you. <laughs> Monster don't, Energy Drink. You Master had Bruce, 12 don't, today. Don't do the voice, Master Bruce. You know <laughs> our rules. The voice is for Adam, though. What if that's what Batman's voice sounds like? Because he doesn't drink water yeah. ever. <laughs> Give me my magic strong juice. And then, like, you just see Alfred filling up a water bottle and he winks. <laughs> You're like, yeah, 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 yeah here's your magic strong juice, Master He writes <laughs> Batman's, Batman's secret stuff on it. <laughs> I'll get my superpowers from my strong juice that Alfred gives me. That's right, that's right. Sometimes I put mint in it. Uh, that Listen, I'm tired of dragging Batman. He's done a lot for our community. Let's, <laughs> take, a, let's take a trip to the money zone. Right now, I am having an extremely comfortable sock experience because I'm wearing Bombas. Uh, these uh, things are beautiful. They are comfortable. They are the only socks that I wear. They wick sweat and cushion every step. They got soft, breezy layers. Mine have, I got some new ones that have some some traction at the bottom, like, like kind of like hospital socks. Ooh. Makes getting around on the floor a lot less scary for me, and that tell was always more. pretty tenuous. Well, there's not much to tell. Yeah, They're just dots. Oh, okay. But if no. you haven't tried okay. Bombas yet and you're tired of hearing us prattle on about them, tough noogies, they paid for this. Uh, I will say also, even if they didn't pay me, I tell you that for every pair or a Bombas item that you buy, another is donated to someone in need, and I think that is... Really cool. They're all seamless, tagless, effortlessly soft. You will love Bombas. If you haven't tried them, see what all the hubbub's about. Go to bombas.com slash my brother and use code my brother for 20% off your first purchase. Bombas.com slash my brother, code my brother. Now listen, these days, it can be hard to find the right offensive radio DJ uh, to like host your morning show. That's why we've partnered with Shock Jock to tell you no, about trap, you, you've what you've gotten it flipped up. You've gotten it flipped upside down. Oh no! This actually says Zoc Doc, which oh, rhymes God. with Shock I'm so, Doc. You I'm are, so embarrassed. You are God, right feel, about that. I feel terrible. Um, it's oh, even harder man. to find. Oh, God. It's even it. harder to find doctors and book it. appointments with. The, <laughs> This bit's going on for a while. Do you think a he had bit to go do something? 
Like he had to go plug something in, and so he snuck away. I think he's sorry, peeing. No, I, sorry, guys. Sorry. All right. Don't worry. Don't worry ZocDoc about it. is what you use to find doctors and book appointments with those doctors. You can search through thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists and filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. Straight up, looking for doctors in the Washington, D.C., DMV area sucks shit because it's not like there's like a big hospital that all the doctors work at they all there's one that works out of the building above the container store there's one that works in the uh in in, right next to the brazilian army annex uh but they so you gotta hunt them down and that's so much harder to do without zocdoc uh so go to zocdoc.com slash my brother and download the zocdoc app for free then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash my brother. ZocDoc dot com. Stop. ZocDoc. ZocDoc dot com slash my brother. ZocDoc dot com. ZocDoc dot com slash my brother. ZocDoc. ZocDoc dot com. ZocDoc Hey, Max Fun listeners, this is Cameron Esposito. I'm a stand-up comic, actor, writer, best-selling author, and podcaster. I got a great show called Query, where I interview LGBTQ plus luminaries across, oh, a bunch of fields. People in entertainment, astronauts, musicians, rock stars. I am bringing the show to maximum fun. You can listen right now, and I am so happy to be on this network. We have new episodes out every Monday. You can listen at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. It's official. Max Fun has become a co-op. We're now a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows supported directly by you. Thanks to supporters and listeners like you, Max Fun will always be a place where employees have a say. Thanks to you, shows can continue to partner with an independent, values-driven network. Thanks to you, we're able to carry on our commitment to our shows and the community we've grown together. Learn more about what becoming a co-op means for us and you at MaximumFun.org slash co-op. That's MaximumFun.org slash C-O-O-P. Yes. I want to munch. Squaw. I want to munch. Squaw. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. Tonight we're going to party like it was recently, 1999. Bam, Taco Bell is turning up the heat with Paris Hilton. Fuck f- yeah. And the fan favorite return of the volcano menu. The hottest items from Taco Bell are returning to, to Taco Bell menus for a limited time on June 29th, complete with the hottest Paris Hilton partnership to introduce the, the brand's first ever pre recorded advice hotline. Okay. Wait, you can pre recorded ta- advice. You can, t- you can call a number and get advice. From Taco Bell and Paris Hilton as a I, as a unit, I that's a that's a powerful team up attack because they both. I can't. It's funny if you think about the weaknesses of Paris. They are they are fulfilled in Taco Bell, like yeah. Taco Bell. Yeah. Anything that Taco Bell is missing, Paris has. Yeah. So Between like together, the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to bring back a trio of options so hot and so Y2K, Taco Bell has called on no other than Paris Hilton to do the honors. Longtime that's Taco hot. Bell fan. That's why. Okay, that's hot. Yeah, that, that's hot. Okay, yeah, that's hot. Okay. Thing. Yeah, and resident expert on what's hot, Paris Hilton joins in to celebrate the return of the iconic menu with the launch of the brand's first ever hotline. Oh, Fans wait. will now have the chance to get advice straight from the source of what's hot and what's not, Paris Hilton. Need a little life coaching? Covered. Still wondering if bangs are a good idea? She'll tell you. After dialing into the hotline at one eight four four, 844 that's hot t h t s h o t 
Fans can engage with a selection of six, six, count them, six, pre-recorded messages while relishing in the heat the Volcano menu offers. Are you fucking telling me that this whole time that we've done this 670 times or whatever, we could have just had six pre-recorded ones that would cover all the advice that could possibly be given out? Apparently, Taco Bell's Volcano menu isn't just iconic. It's the epitome of hot said Paris Hilton. I am loving being part of this Y2K revival with my very own hotline and hope fans will take my advice to Sliv Moss. <laughs> to Sliv Moss? Sliv Moss? Give me Sliv. 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 The Sliving is the... Sliving is the new... It's hot. It's a portmanteau of the word slaying and killing it while you live your best life. <laughs> So sliving. Sliving. <laughs> that's cool though that you can do killing and living in the same word. Yeah. That's that's gonna she, be she that's gonna get somebody off of some sort of court case on a technicality. Can uh, I I'm disappointed because I really wanted it to be like cut to Paris Hilton and her like I fucking love these tacos. I eat ten to <laughs> twelve <laughs> tacos a day. Those. Man, I fucking love are you kidding me? Taco Bell? I can't get, I'm eating them right now. While you're in, I, I love these greasy people. Bring back, bring back the pieces. Do you bring back the pieces yet? I love them. Bring We're back all, the Cool Ranch shells. Oh, fuck yeah. Let's check in with the CMO of Taco Bell, the TB CMO of the US, the US TB CMO, Taylor Montgomery. We're always listening to our fans and the extensive passion and needs, needs, I say, of the Volcano fan base could no longer go unmet. You Are you serious right now, Taylor? One more time. We're always listening to our fans and the extensive passion and the needs of the Volcano fan base could no longer go unmet. Taco Bell's always looking to deliver on that surprise factor for fans and build on our reputation of choosing authentic partnerships with those who are already mega fans. So to like, bring the heat for this major it. campaign, we called on none other than Paris Hilton. All right. This is where Taylor tells us they're available at one store for like three hours, right? Like, yeah, right. You got to get there 10 minutes before we close and we'll throw some out the door. Good luck. I did not call the phone number, and I will just say that. So, f listener, you can you can do that on your own time. I'd do it here on the show, but I'm pretty sure it would be a big nothing burger is yeah. my is my assumption. But you can call one eight four four T H T S H O T. It's hot. This is hot. Nah, it's I hot. gotta call it, don't I? I gotta yeah, call. Hold do. on. Even if it's nothing, it's still. Content, it's still some. You know? We still. It can't go unanswered. What if you on. call and Paris answers live? Like I didn't think anybody was. That'd be good great. Call. That would be a huge, huge gift for, yes. for us. Actually, from your lips to God's ears. I mean, you know, menu hotline where you can get spicy advice from me, Paris Hilton, expert on all things hot. Hold, please. Me, I'm the hot one. What? Why am I on hold? Shh. Press 1 if you're just here for the Volcano menu. Press 2 for advice on sliving from Paris. Press 3 if you want Paris to be your life coach. Press 4 to hear Paris's thoughts on bangs. Press 5 for Paris to read the Volcano menu. Press 6 for a first listen of Paris's unreleased single, Hot 1. Press... Volcano burrito? That's hot. Volcano taco? That's hot. Lava sauce? That's really hot. Well, that was hot. Need more spice? Order yeah. a Volcano Taco on the Taco Bell app. That's hot. Press 1 if you're just here for the Volcano menu. Oh, keep going. Press 2 for advice. Me, I'm the hot one. We are going to get a copyright strike. There's no copyright on this fucking song, Trav. <laughs> I'm releasing it directly to the public domain. <laughs> I thought something else would happen in it. Pound. Yeah, pound cancel. it. <laughs> Don't cancel. cancel. You can't cancel this beat. Exit. Back. Back. Exit. Paris. More options. Paris Hill. Operator. 
Make that work. Press one if you're just here for the volcano menu. I need uh, advice on sliving. Press two for advice on sliving from Paris. Sliving? Press- I've learned that the best way to slive is having amazing friends around you to support you. Speaking of, it would be so hot if you brought me a volcano burrito right now. Press one now, if you're hold just on. Okay, Hey, yeah, in our- this call. In this call. Yeah, yeah that's in a this rough, call. Let's talk about our- one. Listen, listen. If you show up at Paris's door with a volcano taco, yeah. what judge is going to say, like, you shouldn't have done that? That's yeah. weird. Like, I literally called her on the phone and she asked me to. I, I think, yeah. I think, I think Paris Hilton is sending me secret messages to bring her volcano taco for Taco Bell. So you sound wild unless you pick up your phone. Like, no, 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 here. You can just no, listen, listen, judge. It says she explicitly judge. said, and then like the CMO, Taylor Montgomery, is like, I we didn't tell her to say that, guys. Uh, I don't know. Was she it, listed we, her exact home address after that. We tried yeah. that. <laughs> we we had to it edit out. it, man. I don't know what to tell you, bud. We kept um, telling her, like, this isn't DoorDash, Paris. Like, I don't, this isn't how that works. My six-year-old has a gymnastics class once a week, during which I wait with the other moms in the lobby. One of the moms frequently speaks French on the phone or with her other kids. I'm a native French speaker, but she doesn't know that since my daughter only speaks English. Recently, new girls started attending the class, and her mom also speaks French. At what point? Should I let these ladies know that I can understand everything they're saying and in case of the first mom for about a year now? And that's from Let Me Be Frank. Okay. Um, you can't just do it because the person's going to think you've been sneakily spying on them and like creeping well, they won't on them. Think they'll think that. Okay, they'll, they'll know, know that. that that's they'll the know truth. that. <laughs> what so they'll I, think they'll know that is that true fact. They'll think that you they heard you speaking Santa or speaking French and you went away and started learning French so you could eavesdrop you on speak them. to them. That's, That's also not think. a good choice. So let me just go ahead and say maybe you walk over to the microwave that's plugged into the wall in front of them and you unplug it and plug it back in and then are launched 30 feet backwards <laughs> and you sort of get your hair stuck up and you sit up just like, sacre bleu, huh? <laughs> le biscuit à la boîte de biscuit. And then they're like, they'll say something in French back to you and then you can a say A different like, French thing. Yeah. A different French thing. And then you say back like in the, French, in the beautiful French language, like the microwave shocked me so good that I speak your beautiful tongue now. Right. Um, that's that's a surefire way of doing it. Yeah, there, uh, and there's no it. holes in that plan. It's perfect. It's a perfect plan. Yeah, um, and you can sue the gymnastics. Yeah. Uh, and it helps, by the way, flush. if you can put something uh, like uh, French, like a croissant or a escargot into the yeah. microwave so that when you <laughs> oh, get that huge, makes more they're going to travel. Yeah, right. That makes a yeah. lot more sense than Griffin's thing. <laughs> now, I don't put escargot in the microwave because you might make Slugman and yeah. Slugman yeah. flip of yeah. the di- flip of the coin if Slugman yeah. is going to be a good entity or an evil entity. I wouldn't yeah. roll the dice with Slugman or flipping coins. I don't want to take any chances with no. him. Slugman comes down and he's like, ah, they were able to speak French the whole time. <laughs> yeah, ah, au revoir. And you're like, ah, god damn it. <laughs> damn it, Slugman, you got I'm me. Slug- Are slugs just snails without shells? Yes. Whoa. Yeah. Wow, slugs are slugs are snails experiencing homelessness. That's all that they are. That's I all didn't it know is. that. Okay, there's egg on my face. All right. Yeah, my partner and I have been together for two years now, and I think they're the coolest. They're currently professional axe thrower, and they've just transferred out of being a funeral director. They speak four languages, two of them dead, and they are triple black belt in karate. All this, I think we would say third rank, maybe not triple. I bet speaking <laughs> dead languages. I bet speaking dead languages helped as a funeral director. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Travis, <laughs> come now, please. We're professionals. I speak the tongue of the Graveland. <laughs> Basically, this person has coworkers that were repeating these facts as jokes, as if they're made up. It says, for clarification, I work in a work in a warehouse driving a forklift. I cannot have my phone on the floor as I'm driving, so I haven't been able to show them any pictures together. Even so, I feel like it may be weird to show them out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm also 22, far to, far too old to be making up a fake girlfriend. That's from Totally Real in Toronto. You're mm. never too old to be making up a, a fake girlfriend. Old. Never ever. Never if too old. If I can old. make up fake uh, childcare emergencies to get me out of work, right. fake know? job references, 
Uh, fake fake, all. fake part, whatever, man. Fake diarrhea. You're never too old to have an imagination. That's right. <laughs> it's fine. But you are correct that if you bust into the break room and you're like, look, yeah, look, proof, jacques, <laughs> like that, you're never getting invited to any after work get togethers. You yeah. are going to have to be attacked by Rita Repulse's putty crew. They're going to have to come huge. out of nowhere to try to kidnap you. Yeah. Oh, okay. At the last second. Who swoops in to save you? It's your partner with their triple black belt, yeah. and they take down the thugs. Yeah, and then while they speaking come, like Latin and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they come over and give you a smoocharuski, and, and they're like, "Thanks, thanks, babe, uh, for saving my life. I gotta get back so, to work now. I gotta get back to work now. These axes won't throw themselves. You know what? Your partner should probably bury an axe." <laughs> The chest of one of the putties at like oh, thirty. What? Feet. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the Power Rangers kill the putties. Professional. Well, the, the, well, these. Sorry, Travis. You're assuming that Rita Repulse's goopy guys are alive. Yeah, and can be, and therefore have a life to to extinguish. I They're guess I was also play. assuming that these were actors that you hired to be the putties, not no, the actual. That's a waste of time. You just get the real putties from my more from Power Rangers. Well, now you're yeah, gonna have to so set up a honey pot for Rita Repulsa. Yeah, What's might I suggest? Into? Might I suggest a karate tournament at the mall? There uh, you go. Rita Repulsa <laughs> fucking hurts. hates that. She hates oh, oh. The, when those happen. Mm -hmm. uh, or a, a, like an ice cream social that you've been looking forward to, and yeah. then absolutely yeah. every time. Or for some reason, a pachinko machine in the soda shop you guys hang out at. For yeah. some yeah. reason, that's the thing she has to get her mitts on. Uh, that concert at the mall. Um, really, anything a, at the mall. Yeah, store the, opening the at the mall. A lot of people assume that the sort of down the economic downturn of the mall as a concept has to do with the sort of popularization of online shopping um, as as the sort of go to method of acquiring goods in this capitalist society of ours. But it's really that Rita Repulsa makes malls so desperately unsafe that yeah. no one really wants to be there and uh, risk it for the biscuit, so to well, speak. And yeah. that's the thing, man. The number of times where Teresa's like, we should go to the mall today. And I'm like, what if Rita Repulsa is there? And she's like, yeah. she can't be at every mall at once. And I'm like, yeah, but she can be at one mall and it might be ours. There's yeah. no way of knowing. There's no way. And there's only five Power Rangers. Well, six, depending on what season we're talking about. Is there a White Ranger? Right? There are but dozens upon dozens of Power Rangers. There's so many Travis. Power Rangers across what? all the different, for the you different like forces. You sound right now. The, yeah. the Power Rangers all exist, coexist in the same universe. There's dozens upon dozens of Power Rangers. What? I yeah. can't even tell you how many Power Rangers there are. There's Dinosaurs ones. There's Ninjas ones. There's Samurais ones. There's, there's Race Cars ones, right? There's Police ones. There's uh, Outer Space ones. There's Choo Choo Train ones. Wait, there's Police ones? Isn't that there's weird when ones. the there's... other police are there? Like Rita's there and the police are there, and then they're like, nah, Super Police are here now. There, Yeah. Yeah, there are. Um, there have uh, there have been uh, roughly 151 Power Rangers, according Great. to this website. There's a lot. There's so many, Trev. Yeah? You sound like a clown. Are they all equally like powerful? Jesus Christ, Travis. Okay, I'm I'm actually embarrassed. <laughs> is Zordon associated with all 151? Zordon is like long. Zordon died dead. in what? 1991. Yeah. Zordon's no! been dead. Zordon's been yeah. dead for, for oh, a long, man. long time. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. I'm sorry about Travis. God, I'm embarrassed. Fuck. Um, fuck up. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate you listening. Um, we got I love when Zordon. I love when Zordon did a Taco Bell partnership where you could call the phone That's and get hot. Zordon to talk to you. That we is hot, Rangers. Of, we got some beautiful new goods over at MacquarieMerch.com. Two lovely candles based on the new Appalachian Workshop and Poetry Corner. We got. Some By the way, our least sweary episode according yeah. to Jimmy O. Uh, That's uh, great. The one without Griffin in it. The one without Griffin. We got some hot yeah merch. Uh, and uh, uh, the Garrel, the Binacorn stuffy is on sale for 35 buckaroonies. So get in there and get yeah. get your Garrel. Thank you to uh, Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better with You. Uh, it's such a great track. Thank you to MaximumFun.org for having us on the network. We love to be here. Love to do it. We got some shows coming up in San Diego. I don't even know if there's tickets available for these bad boys. Looks like it. You can get them. At, uh, it's going to be July 21st as Taz, July 22nd. MBNBAM. They're both at the Balboa Theater in San Diego. You yep. can go to Taz, uh, Taz GM'd by Brendan Lee Mulligan, by the way. I yes, see it's, right. Yeah, can it's going to be really this? fun. Can we make the sound bath today a little bit like cleaner and a little bit less like you guys doing bird sounds? 
because I don't think you know what a sound bath is. No, yeah, 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 that, yeah, it's yeah. fair. I, that is a fair There's complaint. no words. There's no, you try to keep it. Imagine you're you're projecting a sort of energy force out with your like scatting voice. No, okay. not like scatting. See again, not you've shown like me that kind you, of the opposite of scatting. It. Hey, Griff, excuse me, is it the opposite of scatting? It's in many ways the opposite of scatting. Okay, thank, thank you. All right, yeah. Okay. Up. All right, so we'll go quick. Love. <laughs> you couldn't Chester resist. Ackroyd. You couldn't I'm Travis Ackroyd. It. I'm it's Ackroyd. just that it took it's over. Right. My brother, my brother, he kissed your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.